The following podcast may contain spoilers. Hey everybody, good to be back. This is Jonathan Kenny, your host with the Treading the Path of Heaven podcast. I'm here as joined by always as my co-hosts. I'm Bill. I'm Richard. I'm Seth. Feels good to be that co-host for real now, right? Yeah. Get to Eventually, chime in, <laughs> like on beat, like everybody else, you know. Like, if we were to do like a barbershop quartet kind of deal, I would try and hit the right, right one. It would be great. It would be fantastic. <laughs> so we'd have a baritone as our lead. Yeah, maybe. I've never heard that. But it that could would happen. Be awesome. It could happen. I mean, we could do some. We could do some like uh, non <laughs> non regulated fucking barbershop hold, quartet. Hold on, shit. nah, man. If I'm doing anything, we're doing it by the books. We're, we're absolutely going with, with not. The regulations. We gotta we gotta live on the edge, the creative edge of barbershop. We're not doing barbershop quartet. Barbershop for quartets. I don't even think we have a tenor in in our group to do a barbershop quartet. Whatever. It's just baritones and basses. Just baritones and basses. <laughs> That'd be great, though. We could just do different baritones and basses and, like, play off each other. It'd be it'd be fantastic. People wouldn't want to listen to it, but it'd be fantastic. <laughs> Barbershop duo duet? Duo yeah. duet. Yeah. <laughs> duo it duet. would be art. Yeah. It would not be good art. Yeah. I mean, that's good art nowadays. Speaking yeah, exactly. of not good art, uh, or I guess good art. Wait, wait, wait. This episode goes out to a sp- certain special someone on our Discord channel. Uh, Vendor Heart Lion, this one's for you. We are, in fact, reviewing. Nine uh, Star Hegemony uh, Nine Star Hegemony Body Art. Something like that. <laughs> yeah, one of those. Nine Star Hegemon Body Art. There you go. NHSBA. It's, uh, it is N- a real S- funnel. HBA? NSHBA. Yes. Nishba. It's, yeah, it sounds like an organization. The story of my man Long Chin. Mm, got that long chin. Ah, oh, his chin old is disgustingly long. Dragon. My man's old dragon. Uh he's like he's the cultivator that I've always read about. He's always like that secondary cultivator that's like a cool guy. That like ferocious barbarian dude. That scoundrel. That guy who wields the heavy saber. The story knows this is one of those characters that shows up in other stories that would be like, you guys remember Desolate Era? You remember at Gene Ng, uh, when he was getting ready for that big tournament and they like summoned all the heroes from the area? And they what had... a cool fucking scene. Yes. I do not. Okay, so. Read Desolate Era or Desolate other books. Era. <laughs> I, I've read a few books. So we covered Desolate Era, but Desolate Era is by I Eat Tomatoes and it's awesome. But his main character, Gene Ng, is a sword cultivator. And sword cultivators show up in this story, by the way. And they're just straight up. Oh, they're super powerful because their attack stat is the highest. Yeah. As, oh, the, yeah. as the series puts well, it. Well, no, because like there's also the sword cultivators that are like, ooh, we're the attack ones. Or, ooh, we're the weird trickery ones. Or, well, yeah, like, but all those are shitty. Real sword cultivators <laughs> have the highest attack stat. Yeah, who needs defense when you kill them? But... But what about the spear guys? <laughs> Spears are only cool in martial world. But but the cool part about it all is, you know how Genie and this Lara meets like a saber guy who's just like saber genie with the same treasures and same lucky chances. We get to follow that guy, except he's also the main character from Emperor's Domination without all the whack shit from Emperor's Domination. Yeah. It's you, awesome. You, you're saying this, but it's really, it's just against the gods part two. Remind us what was so whack about Emperor's Domination. It wasn't whack. It was just like, Emperor's Domination was just a victory lap the entire time. Mm-hmm. So you didn't get a chance to it, like, the main character never really grows as a person or like is ever in any real danger or any he's just victory lapping the entire like, time he's the guy that beat a person five realms of cultivation past him by being real good at a martial art yeah okay yeah yeah because like he's the guy who knows where all the cheat items are because he put them there 
Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <Except for> domination. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, that's that's pretty lame. Fair enough. But Continue. Uh, so, like, it, it, you never felt a threat in Emperor's Domination. I mean, like, like even like even the face slapping isn't as good in Emperor's Domination because he's because he's an old soul and he's so much better than everyone. It's more like an old elder talking down to people. And this one's like, if you saw a five year old talking shit to like a forty year old police officer, I love it. How did we get a five year old talking shit to a police officer? <laughs> How do we get to that, Bill? Well, I guess I can read you the novel updates. I would hmm. love it if you read me the novel updates, Bill. Is he the reincarnation of a pill god, or is he the fusion of spirits? A youth whose spirit root, spirit blood, and spirit bone three Whoa! things were all stolen. Long Chin must rely on his memories of divine pill refining arts and a mysterious cultivation technique, the Nine Star Hegemon Body Art, in order to part the layers of misleading fog and solve a heaven-shaking riddle. Heaven and Earth are within his grasp as he steps through the cosmos, meets all kinds of beautiful women, and suppresses devils, <laughs> demons, and gods. All kind of beautiful women made it right into the... No, you don't even understand. No, it's an important plot. It's one. an important part of... Fair enough. The thing is... His Dao heart is domination. Was there more, Bill? Legend has it that when Long Chin arrives, the lands roar and heaven screams, ghosts sob and gods weep. <laughs> Incredible. So he's basically cultivation base god, and he does that by taking your bitch. So I mean, like he ruins you spiritually, metaphysically, spiritually. Physically? He like definitely destroys physically, your will to oh, fight. Oh, no, Always no, no, physically no, at the end. It's not destroying your will to fight. It's literally destroying you. Yeah, no, he tears you apart by hitting you. So, so hard. his special ability is the bitch slap. Well, hold on, we can't we can't go all the way. Yeah, okay, to bitch slap. Let's That's, start. Let's no, start. Yeah, we no, haven't no. set up any context for this story. Like, let's start up the, whatsoever. Let's start at the beginning. How did we get to where we are? Okay, so this is how it starts. Long Chen wakes up after having had, had get, basically he got curb stomped. He wakes up just awful and he is in so much pain. He's about to die. There's some crappy, there's some crappy alchemist here that created a crappy pill, a pill that's like 99% impurity and they feed it to him to try to get him the hill and they blow all the money that what little money his his family and his mother has, they blow on this shitty pill. Sell all their jewelry. That's stupid. Come, come to find out, you realize that their family is in dire straits because, you know, every they're a noble family, but they're like noble family Z tier. Well, well they, no, they're, they're super they're important. Super no, tier, they but are, they got... but they aren't. Yeah, because they are being treated like Z tier. They are, but only because the, on, the only person like that's political reasons, whatever. I mean, yeah, sure, but like, fact of the matter is, they are literally the trashiest of noble families, as a, according to all other noble families. And well, yet they possess the nation's strongest man. Exactly. They're still, like, he has friends that are lower, lower tier nobles, but they have more money than him. So it's brutal, right? Like, it's brutal, and he's treated like crap. Because he can't cultivate. Like he wakes in this body, and this is this is a different long chain. Like he has like the memories of being a child and ra being raised by his father and family, but he has memories of being a different person and also the memories of a pill god, and he is unsure what is what. Yeah, he's not sure if he's the pill god who's taken over this child's body or if this pill got or if he was the child and the memories have been implanted into him. And this novel does a really good job of convincing you it could really be either. A lot of the times it feels like, yes, we are the kid. A lot of the times it feels like, no, this is definitely an old wizened master that's taken over somebody. They give you this grand overarching like mystery in the beginning. And then he's like on a quest to figure it out. Who took my spirit root? That's basically like it's like that, except as he goes on this mystery search, you know, just like the Persona 4 where they're trying to, the Scooby gang is trying to figure out what's going on. He runs into the dude who beat him half to death. Immediately, he pops off at the mouth. It's, it's not even like a man, I should watch out for myself or key, keep a low key or do something like that, right? No, he's got shit to talk and he's gonna talk it. Yes. On a level that... So, this guy is a master shit talker. We've had master shit talkers before. What makes this not, guy special? Not, uh, he's vulgar. I mean, he, 
you say that like not really much if he's very comparable to other shit talkers like long chin or for uh not sorry chu fung or um mung hao uh, uh mung hao was, was not was not vulgar i mean okay um what about uh against the gods guy? Yun Chi for Yun-Chi. sure. Oh uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, very, very Yun Chi esque. I I don't know if I've heard this many back to back like brutal insults though. Like, this is a man who will insult you, your mother, your mother's mother, your father, your grandfather. No, not my his grandfather. Ancestors. Then he will call you a stupid cunt to your face. Jesus, and he'll mean it. It's pretty great. <laughs> All right. Um, that sounds pretty pretty intense. What happened next then? So yeah, he basically wakes up in this body. He's like, aha, I'm the pill god. I can do, oh my god, I can't cultivate. This is the worst. But he remembers this one cultivation art called the Nine Star Hegemon Body Art. But And he understands perfectly how to cultivate it, but he does not know the intricacies of exactly how it works. Because the pill god memories are there, but they're incomplete in, in areas. There's one problem about the cultivation of this. It requires a hell of a lot of me- med- medicinal pills. A la Martial World with me- incomplete memories taken from elders and medicinal pills being like, the more, the farther along you go, the exponential it increases that you need. I mean, I think it's really cool, though, that we get a main character who's straight up just an alchemist, like all off the bat. In the beginning of this novel, they focus on his alchemy because it's so it, the process of doing it. So you you intrinsically understand how difficult it is to create a pill and create a pill flame and all the other stuff. As he begins and realizes the vast amount of money he needs to cultivate this nine star hegemon body art, he finds out fun ways of doing that by exploiting the fact that. The people here believe him to be the same pushover he was the previous day when he was almost beat to death. And and, and when he walks out of his house, he runs into one of the assholes that beat him up. They, they, they give him no face, so he gives them no face. And then they have a death fight. No, not a death fight. Like, like sounds... a death challenge. And then he also puts up money that he borrowed from someone. So challenge like this to the death or like yeah because he's got a cool like older brother type who's like hard working and is real cool and, and actually good and he like believes in him because he's a cool guy to answer okay. your question the challenge to the death is yes this is an official you can't fight in this city in the streets because that's like against the rules but like if if you if you sign a lease you can go like fight in a like a, an arena in the city sanctioned you to fight to the death Usually you'd go until you can give up, but then there's also the go until someone dies. The okay. first one, I believe, is go until you give up, and uh, boy, does that not go the way you think it's going to go. You know the main character's there, and he he sucks. Like, he's weaker than, like, a normal human. Like, he's weaker than a normal kid his age. I think he's, what, 16 right now? Or 15 at this point? Okay. Uh, and so, he's weaker than a normal teenager at this point. Like, he is brutal. Like, he gets out of shape, he breathes hard, he sweats easy, it's does, just bad. Does the older version of him that he re- has the memories of, was he uh, also shitty when he was 15 or 16? It's, no, oh, no, it's, like, it's a pill god. Like, he has the memories of a pill god. It's oh, not that he has an older memory version of himself. He just has fragmentary memories of this pill god being. Gotcha. Who is, who may be him, who may be the other person. Got it. It's it's just like the memories of someone super smart, but unfortunately these memories don't have any memories on combat. It's like it's not it's not like it doesn't have any battle techniques, doesn't have any innate he talent remembers, for fighting. No, he remembers yeah. combat. He understands yeah. like how to make efficient strikes. Well, he knows no, no, no. pressure like, points. Yeah, he's like he Sherlock does, Holmes. He knows pressure points. He actually has no technique for yeah, fighting yeah no i'm I'm not saying he has like battle techniques or like any of those things agreed he has zero of those but he is an expert at fighting from the get-go that's why he beats people that are realms above him like that's why he's able to win the life or death fight immediately i mean yeah. that life or death fight he won by kicking that dude in the balls yeah it was pretty great like it wasn't like a, a technique it's a you have yeah. openings boom right in the nuts those openings are your balls, sir. Yeah, but I mean, that wasn't something he had before the pill god memories. 
Like that was something unique to after that. It was a, uh, oh, I understand the body and medicine so yeah. well. A la Yun, Yun Chi Medicine Man, when he was like a weak dude, he was like, still did joint attack, fucked with people. He knows uniquely how to ruin a body because he knows uniquely how to repair it. But like he himself kind of sucks in the beginning, which is why like his fast growth was kind of super dope, right? How fast he was able to grow as a combatant is honestly, it, it loses to the power of the nine star hegemon body art because he he needs to get money so he can get stronger so he stronger can get was it notably like a strong technique or was it just no an underused technique it, no one knows it it Got literally it. only exists as far as he knows for him okay yeah it just is a thing he knows he doesn't know why he knows it he just does but long story short he uses the capital he earns in that death fight to go start his alchemist trade because as any book with a brain protagonist uh, with an alchemist, A Will Eternal, uh, Battle Through the Heavens. Martial World, because he did alchemy. Well, yeah, yeah, but I'm not talking about people that do alchemy side. I'm talking about people that have alchemists as one of their main identities. Okay, I Shall Seal the Heavens? Yes, but less... I would say that if I hadn't already said A Will Eternal, who was basically just more alchemy-focused, Monk Howe. Fair. Alka Howe. Alka Howe, ugh. Pure little me. That's disgusting. <laughs> Pure little Pai Shao Chun. <laughs> Goddamn, hey, Dawu. Uh, great, great book. Go read Will Eternal. It's finished. Uh, alchemy makes money. People that can be who are alchemists are always, always rich and can get favors from anyone. Because, like, the beauty of it here is, I'm skipping ahead because I actually don't want to mess up the beginning because the beginning is actually a joy. Where, where is our spoiler limit? Did we decide? We'll just feel it out. The, the, we're like. The story is still relatively er relatively early on in the actual story. Okay. There's only four four to five hundred chapters translated right now. I want to like, say like four eighty. Yeah, four eighty ish. We still we're still in the early beginning. We're dude. still very much in the beginning of the story. <laughs> we we may spoil a fair amount of stuff. Like we're not going to spoil specific stories. We're like we'll skirt around stuff. Believe uh, me. As of right now, four hundred and eighty. But status in C O O. Chapters ongoing is 2,801. That that sounds correct. Yeah, so that like, makes sense. And the author's name is Ordinary Magician. Just didn't uh, bring cool. that up earlier. Well, Ordinary Magician is a vulgar, vulgar man. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty great. Um, <sighs> Longchen is just the 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 hegemon, the the barbarian, the the scoundrel slaughter man. Uh, he's also like it's beauty. I, I, I'm gonna skip ahead a little bit. The way he fights, even when, because the thing about him is because his Dao heart is being domineering, that means he can't back away from situations. Like how, uh, example, he is, he's in a forest, right? Looking for a treasure and he's picking up things and he sees a treasure that's just way too dangerous to go for. Like he knows if I go for this, I'm probably going to die. But I gotta have it. But I gotta have it because he has I can't a disease. Back down. He's like, I got a disease. Well, the disease I mean, is greed, or the disease no, he's like is the actual actual treasure. Disease. Take the treasure. Greed. greed. If okay. you're familiar with One Piece, he's the opposite of Usopp's disease. Oh, he he has to throw himself into danger. <laughs> yes, <laughs> cause as much trouble as possible. Well, because like he always like figures out. Oh, well, I'll just use the terrible things happening around me against each other and then profit, you know, as per usual, he just plays the fisherman nine times out of 10. Yeah. yeah. He has a saying he does like to use. If I can't beat you to death, I'll play you to death. I see. Which he does. There's a part where he kites a dude four rooms above him, right? MMORPG kite this man, like a melee creep across the forest while shitting on him with traps and insults and poo. It's pretty great. His poo or like collected yeah. poo? Did he collect poo? <laughs> Both. Both. That's terrible. Where did he get the poo? <laughs> I know this is a very specific thing, he's but I an need alchemist. to know. He understands gathering ingredients in nature. And oh, he... so he just like animal shit. He's got all kind of animal shit. And his own because he was running. Like he couldn't take breaks. He had to shit on the go. Yeah, okay, I think I should be more concerned at the fact that he's using his own shit instead of animal shit. You gotta do he is what shameless. you gotta do. Yeah? Uh, he doesn't give a shit. One of his pickup Apparently lines. he does. But I'm um, <laughs> God. 
I hate, doesn't give a I shit. hate that I did that. He I hate myself. I hate you too. Yep. Continue. <laughs> but one of his pickup lines is one of one of his many females calls him a scoundrel. And he's like, Do you have a dream? He's like, Yes. Gonna be a great big scoundrel. To be the best possible scoundrel. Yes. Yeah. He even builds followers. In fact, one of my favorite characters, because there's one thing about one thing about this character is he's great to his brothers. That's a typical one, but like the people he built around him, the clan he's raising up around him off the power of his alchemy are quite ridiculous. Example, he has Cultivation Iron Man. He's the boy. Yeah, no, there's a guy who's just, my Tao is the Tao of forging. And the first thing he builds is a suit of goddamn Iron Man armor that he uses to fuck up everyone. <laughs> is it like Actually, I take that shit? back. The first thing he builds is a fucking big-ass crossbow that snipes people the fuck down. And, and then he made explosive rounds. Oh, I love it. I love that character so much. He's so good. And he's brutal. And as cutthroat, and the thing is, he starts off as not being this cutthroat, but his boss is Long Chin. And boy, can this man learn. Cultivation Iron Man learns very fast. Yeah. He literally goes from being a person that I thought was going to be like a shitty, annoying character to being like the most legendary hype man. Ooh, I like a good hype man. Like, and he gets it. Like, Long Chin has him there and he loves what he's doing like he implicitly agrees with 100 percent of the things this guy is doing and he doesn't he just like he can just like sit back and let this guy talk shit for him so he doesn't he can just sit back and look imposing when they're talking shit it's like battle rap man like long chin will say something domineering then he'll stop talking and then cultivation iron man will show up and he'll be like my boss don't need to talk to you Get out of here, you old bitch. You ain't worth the time. We're going to kill you if you don't get the fuck. <laughs> it's, it's like that moment in a scene where a man, like a squire in his night, and the squire will just like do, bring up like a stool, start shining the guy's shoes. They take this entire time for nothing. It's literally what they're doing. They're just disregarding everyone else around them. The beauty of it is, I remember it's that just scene. So, it's so theatrical. They set it up. He's like, I want to do this to insult these people. And at first, Long Chin was like, that's a little much. But then a situation appears for him to take it that far. And how did the person react? They set <laughs> it up and did it, and Long Chin went along with it because it was appropriate to the theme. <laughs> Incredible. They came in there talking. That's the one thing, all right? People don't realize that like, at first, it's like, you're just a peerless genius. Oh, man, you're once in a generation genius. Oh, man, you're the greatest genius we've ever seen here at this monastery. People keep stepping on his toes, and then they die. They step on his toes, and he can't deal with the problem, but somehow he plays them until they die. It's great. That's the story. That is the story. And it all, I kind of, it all gets triggered kind of off the face slaps, man. Like, it's amazing. I, I, I can't, I can't. Yeah, I, I, I skipped over it before. Tell, tell the story of how he got his face slaps. I need to know. Did, did he? It sounds like he acquired the art of face slapping. It's not. It's, it's innate to him. It's like people would think it would be a battle technique, and he could kill with it if he wanted, but he doesn't because it's more threatening when he well, doesn't he kill could, with he it. He couldn't kill <laughs> if he wanted. That's specifically the point. It has no killing intent. It's just to disrespect you. But even with, because he's doing it to disrespect you, but he's doing it so hard that if you put in a little bit more power, they would explode. Like, it's a divine, people explain it, the way people explain it, it's like a divine move. It's like 100% hit rate, never misses, always creates a situation for him to profit or infuriates them so much that they kill themselves. Jesus. He always knocks out teeth, breaks noses ruins their grill it is so just... it's always in front of people and like oh yeah yeah they're, oh. they're like talking shit and they're like oh yes yes you long chin you may be big but you're only a, a mere blah 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 and then like as they're talking about this they get slapped out of a, out of a place they couldn't have possibly see there's no killing intent so they didn't feel it coming at all they're just slapped two teeth flying out of the wind. They've never been slapped in their goddamn life because they're basically nobility as far as they're concerned. Sure. But the point is that there's no killing intent within it. It's just so they don't see it coming. It's they, just they, they don't feel it at all. It's yeah. just suddenly there's a hand on their face. 
There, yeah. There's a time where the dude was like engaged in this great battle to the death, sword dows and saber dows and power and the and the the fucking fabric of the reality is bending from their clashes, and then they just get slapped into a mountain, bitch slapped in front of them, and then insulted right like, after, like slammed impact into a mountain or like slammed impact through a mountain slap someone so hard it looks like some dragon ball z shit and they fly through a mountain off the slap incredible slap so hard you activate a, a teleportation amulet and you go a hundred thousand miles away because the slap was that humiliating yes levels of tell slap. me more slaps i need to know more power slaps i mean it's pretty much that all the time it's just like People talking shit and he walks up and slaps them or or people insulting his women and he walks up and slaps them. And then when he slaps them, Cultivation Iron Man's always there with a great quip about how bad you got slapped. You ever watched Friday? No, yeah. Smokey walked up to the dude, Debo Deboed, and he was like, you got not the fuck out. That's basically that character. God, I love that Debo is a verb. <laughs> <laughs> He's pretty much just Debo's people. And that's long shit in a nutshell. I wish I could talk more about it, but there's like not enough and I would have to spoil. Yeah, we we could be I a mean, lot more like, specific than we're being, but we're trying to be vague to kind of avoid a, spoilers somewhat. I guess, but there's so many other cool things like the fact that he's a saber user and he has like a move called pierce the heavens. Split the, Split the, split the heavens. heavens. Same difference. It's still fucking cool. <laughs> like, as, or the fact that the cultivation of the nine star heaven Jamon body art is like, they're actual acupuncture points in his body that open up stars that he has to feed energy into. Yeah, yeah. When he fig when he does the first pill, it opens a goddamn Dantian in his foot. He didn't have a Dantian because he had all that shit stolen, but he opened one in his foot. And then all the energy that was supposed to go into his Dantian like started going into that area. So he's like suddenly, oh shit, I can cultivate now because I made a star in my foot. Does he kick better? He yes. does a lot of things better, but when it happens, the area around his foot explodes. It's very specific and very deliberate. I see. As far as I'm aware, he has opened two. One in his foot and one in his hand. The, the polar, like, I think it was left foot and right hand. And it's just like... And, and uh, like, the thing is, the, uh, the hand one ain't even full yet. And it already multiplies his power by a lot. On top of that, the way it cultivate, the way you, the way you generate power into it, has an interesting flow throughout all of the uh, points in his body. And the way it flows is also unique. Like it innately builds power due to its rotation. And it is a plot point at one point, but he is the only person who can do this because of those three things he is missing. Yeah, if he didn't have those, the energy would come into his dante and explode. And he would die. That's I a see. plot relevant point. <laughs> so it's good that he was fucked up to begin with. Thanks, yeah. story. Hey, I, this is not at all a spoiler because it is not at all confirmed or even really hinted at. I'm just calling this as a shot in the dark before the story's sure. translated. Yeah, go for it. Um, Long Chin, Pill God Long Chin is the person who stole the, the spirit root, spirit blood, and, and all that jazz Holy from, shit. from our guy. Think about, I, I just realized, think about meeting, like, a guy from China who has read all of these books, and you're like, oh, yeah, uh, wh what about, uh, what about this one? And they're like, dude, I've read all of that, and then immediately start spoiling shit for you. <laughs> that would be, that would be both the most magical and worst, like, Magically interaction you tragic. could have in this. Yeah, exactly. Ah, it's the opposite, opposite of serendipitous. <laughs> Sorry, just had a had a thought. Uh, honestly, though, there are so many cool parts to the story, and there's a lot of lamp shading in the story too. So the normal cultivation method these people have when they go from blood condensation to tendon transformation to bone bone forging. forging, these people when they break to the next realm, the heavens give them help. They come down. The heavens give give favor. And they choose people and they give them good luck and karmic luck and all the other stuff. They're not. They don't go through tribulations the way traditional cultivators from novels we've read go through. Sure, but that shit has to attach to a spirit root or spirit blood and all that shit. So it comes down to him, and it's just like, oh no, no, I can't go to you. And he's like, well, fuck you then. <laughs> it's so brutal. This is how much the heavens hate him. Not only can he get get karmic luck at all. 
every time he breaks through, he gets tribulation lightning. He gets super dunked on. Which is like a super, super cliche thing in cultivation novels. But in this one, it pretty much mostly just happens to him. So that's why it's unfair. I mean, it is super cliched. uh, But like... So is so much in this novel. Yeah, Yeah, but but the fact that he also has the thing where it's like, oh man, good thing I could turn this terrible thing that happens only to me into a good thing that happens only to me. It's because he's nuts. Because he's like... Fuck, that tribulation lightning hurt really hard. I wonder if I found a way. So he intentionally to breaks through lightning. like while while enemies are around. Oh no, that that's a different story. Uh now there was that one time he <laughs> No, that's uh Wudong Kyung Kyun. <laughs> yeah. There was that one time he hung out on a kite though, like inside a thunderstorm yeah, yeah. that he went full Bryn Franklin. Yeah. I don't think Yeah, I mean, no, no, he literally had someone fly him on a kite that he rode on top of and just Absorb lightning until there was no more lightning to absorb. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like Ben Franklin 8.0. It's not he not like exactly. turned it into a lightning pet inside of his veins. It was like Ben Franklin if he was the key. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. He legit took a hit from an asshole on purpose so he could steal his Thunder Force. <laughs> it was pretty fun. And then he used it to feed his Thunder Force. No, not only did that, but he also used it as an excuse to flirt with the woman the Thunder Force guy wanted to steal a kiss from her disgusting because that's long chin what yeah. a horrible human being no he's the best he's human the being. best he's he, the he... only one with any goddamn honor in this world and the people around him are the people that recognize that and start to honor that and because they do that he's like because you did that you're my brother and now like we're going through life together this I is see. you and me i see yeah no he's he, he's a fucking he just bro. adds to his tribe he might have the largest kill the largest confirmed kills for for a non Zantian main character that I've seen, and this is early, so like, yeah. damn. Like, oh no, like, they're they're definitely stretching out the opening stretch. Like they're still they're still at the bottom of Hoshian. Yeah, they're they're still at like the we need to improve our body to the point where we can become like start the immortal path. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, I will also say this is like some of the biggest realm jumping that I currently have read about. Per like, like uh, fucking, I think a great realm and a half, two great realms at one point. Yeah, it's pretty much against the gods and emperors' domination for realm jumping. I think. Yeah, this is no martial god Osra where you are adding three plus three <laughs> <laughs> to get power level seven because you have an inherent plus one when you activate your thunder armor. Thunder armor. It's nuts to me though. He's realm jumping, but like normally when people are realm jumping, I'm like, oh man, it's some ass pull bullshit. When he's realm jumping, the fight, like the the fights, do feel like he's really kind of playing this by ear. You know what I'm saying? Everything is very Razor's Edge feeling. Yeah, he he is he is saber guy and going for hard. The and author does a really good job of making you really feel like the main character really is in danger. They're also not afraid to kill allies. Yeah. At all. Well, I like that. That's always a yeah. fun approach to, to story writing. Yeah, it's pretty well established that what he's really terrified of are the people around him dying as he can't prevent it. And like, so a lot of the tension in the story isn't coming from really him being in danger so much as him being tied up so much that he can't protect the people around him. God, man, that echoes right into Overgeared, which we'll be talking about at another time. But mm. Overgeared, uh Soon, soon, guys. Soon. The biggest thing I love about Long Chin is the fact that he does establish that I am bringing you with me, and he th- does it through alchemy, and he does it through he'll he'll buy a ton of. Uh, he bought this like super duper heavy sword that he can't wield, but he just hands it off to his mountain bro that we haven't talked about yet. Oh, we haven't even mentioned Wild. We didn't talk Shit. about Wild. No, we still got time. No, to talk, yeah. talk a little bit about. No, Wild. this is this is us chastising ourselves for taking this long to talk about it. I say, go for it. So, um, so there's this guy that's like really big, like Big John, but like Big Big, big Bad big. John. No, 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 Big Big John. <laughs> the guy Big John would feel. Was bigger. Was Big John. Yeah. Yeah. You know, every day at the mine, you could see him arrive. He stood like 12 foot 12 and weighed 845. Yeah. (laughs) All right. 12 foot forever. Wild is weird in that not only is he ridiculously strong and has insane, insane amounts of durability, he's dumb as a doornail. 
My, actually, dumber than a doornail. Oh, no. And, um, well. I got a piece of dirt and, like, mount pushed it together real hard. It probably could think better than Wild. But it doesn't matter because Wild's constitution is the weirdest shit ever. So he lacks, you know, people have all the acupuncture and all of the cultivation points in their body. All the meridians. All the meridians. People have sure. like 300 or something. Yeah, or other. he has four. They're just big and thick. He's got a meridian going to each of his limbs and he's got a Dantian and that's what he's got. But he also has like a weird, like he has no spiritual power. He has no spiritual energy, but he has a weird energy inside of his body that's powered by food. And he has never known a home because he has eaten himself out of every place that's ever accepted him. Incredible. Until he meets Long Chen. And when Long Chen finds him, he's like starving on the road, being beaten. And he's just like lying there taking it because like he has no energy. But also they're not doing any damage to him. No, the, cra the crazy thing about it is, right, he's getting beat on because they... Offered him food to build a well. And he shows up and he's like, why is there a giant tower? He was too dumb to figure out you dig a hole, not build a tower. <laughs> he just held the, the plants upside down. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, but uh, he's got the physical ability to do that, but not the mental ability to figure out he had the map upside down. Incredible. Long chin is capable of many, many things, okay? But one thing he is incapable of is teaching wild. They reference this line so much in the story with greater people than Long Shen, and they themselves are unable to teach him. He tried. The only way he was even able to even conceptualize getting wild to try to activate one percent one, uh, 1 of one percent of his power is you can't eat until you kill a cow Using the, the punch I showed you. Yeah. Every time you do that, you can eat the cow you kill. But if you don't do it right, you can't eat the cow. I and mean, he does. He, he does almost starves. Straight eat raw beef. Like, he just kills a cow I was gonna and say, eats it right In there. what way does he prepare it? No, he just, he's so uh, hungry, he, just, he doesn't prepare it. He just eats it. He doesn't have time. Yeah, no. He is a straight monster. It's kind of gross, yeah. Uh, and there's a point where he looks at the guy's cells and find out that the cells aren't being activated. So, like, I don't know what that means. Is he, like, a, dr a, a gluttony dragon? Like, what the... What is he? Like, his cells are starving, so they won't turn on. But he has to eat to turn them on. But if he turns them on, it burns his calories, so he has to eat again. Or it'll turn off. So it's fine, though. Long Chen's an alchemist, so he buys a cow, a cow pasture, and he's just like, yeah, just go eat however many cows you want. It's fine. Okay. And that's why they become brothers for life. Yes. Also because Wild is too naive and stupid to betray Long Chen, and Long Chen appreciates people that he can trust. True that. Wild would throw his body at anything. There's a point where they try to experiment on Wild's body like bad guys, right? And they put these spikes in his body that would kill like a tendon transformation expert. It's like bone two. eroding needles. Yeah, bone eroding needles bone that are eroding, so painful. Yeah. Um, it's, it's the idea is that like one puts you in extreme pain Two makes you basically lose your mind. Three, you basically try to start killing yourself. And they like filled him up like a goddamn porcupine with these things. Mm, but and he just knows. And he's just it. like, I mean, it kind of hurts. <laughs> it's not as bad as how hungry I've been. <laughs> I'm so hungry. I, I I really wish that I could turn down different levels of like hunger. That'd be fantastic. I, but he, he, he's he, got the opposite. He can turn down pain in favor of hunger. I'm not going to lie to you. I want the story where this guy's the main character. And like, I just want to watch his life unfurl. It'd be kind of boring. Think about when they're like his training and he, he gets his master and his, his master goes out and they just hunt for food. Yeah. Be ton of and then he fought the T Rex and it's, then he brought the hammer down. It's, it's, it's and it's like, the T Rex. <laughs> oh, dude, oh man, there's a yeah. wyvern. It's, I you, swung my club. You find I out, ate the wyvern. <laughs> you find out that the most efficient way for Wild to fight is to him to have the heaviest thing that he can lift and to swing it at things because no one else can lift that. No one else. Wild sounds like a great character. Yeah, I think I agree that I would watch a show about this guy. Yeah, he's watch a show. Great. Read a book. About just this it'd guy. It'd be a Food Network show. No, it'd be... It'd be Isn't it just Toriko, but like... 
Toriko with no. no story. Yeah. yeah. Toriko where they spend most of the time eating and sleeping. So Toriko. Uh, yeah, Toriko. <laughs> Toriko if the main we character couldn't the cook, I guess. <laughs> yeah, but no, this this is a really great book. We've we've gushed a lot. We didn't talk about Little Snow. All right, talk about Little Snow, but make it quick. Uh, he gets a puppy. Hey, he he does. He gets a wolf companion. Mm. It's a cute pupper, but it's also terrifying. Oh, In what I... way? What's it do? Everything. It's it's fast. It's like fast and shoots fire and wind. Scary wolf puppy. Um, I'm in. It was given to him by his ex fiance, who had good feelings towards him. She was a monster tamer. Yeah, it's like a fourth ranked magical beast. Once it gets like maxed out which is huge but that scares people but yeah he's like a fire wind wolf and that fire makes wind better and wind makes fire better so it's like really mm. explosive it, it's they have a, combo attacks that are pretty great it's a wolf that shoots resin guns pretty much yeah that <laughs> explode <laughs> um, yeah. and he also typically with monsters you make like a slave seal with them very uh tate no yusha esque but this one he's just like nah we're, we're bros. And Lil Snow's like, yeah, we're bros. Very yeah, Coiling bro. Dragon-esque. Well, yeah. If he had put a slave imprint on it, it, it nerfs their growth and nerfs their ability to do combat. Like, it's brutal. He doesn't do that, so his his brother, Little Snow, can grow at the same rate as his, as his teacher, except there's a cap to it. But because it's long chin, no one has caps. Yeah, yeah no, it's he, pretty great. Figures out a way to well, break he, that because he's got the pills. No, that's that's the great part is like he understands real cultivation for everyone else. So like he's supplying all their shit with alchemy. His stuff is held back by the fact that he needs absurdly rare and mythical and primordial herbs to make the pills that are required in great quantity to cultivate his art. He's perpetually behind everyone, but it's okay because his behind everyone is so strong or stronger than they're ahead of him yeah incredible basically in the sense of little snow the story about how they meet and what happens in the early stages is really sweet but like that moment where little snow just sort of balloons little snow has had a size issue for me it's gone from a little pupper to like you know a dog to like a dog bigger than a person to Clifford the big red dog. The big white dog. Big white dog. Back down to regular pupper? Or is it no, no, he's it's how, a pupper what? as big as a human again? I was gonna say I think he's kind of like dire he? wolfy. Yeah, he's oh, dire right. wolfy, except like he's vi- he's it's very like a much pokey evolution, pretty much what just yeah. happened. But it's one of those where they get smaller. That's always the good ones, because that's when they condense their strength. Mm-hmm. Very, very Ranga from uh that time I reincarnated as a slime. Yeah. Very, yeah, yeah, he's yeah. He has his own Tempest Wolf. And instead of Tempest, it's fire. No, it is Tempest. It's fire Tempest. So like, he's fire. Yeah. Oh yeah, no. Yeah. That's <laughs> that's a pretty natural resting point for the, for that. Um, oh. like go read this book. Do it. It's a. Uh, it's. It was sold to me as a book that's full of cliches, but like knows how to write them, and like it. It is. It is incredible. Like it's not. It is not the story decisions it makes. It is the characters that it creates and the world it is building that is fascinating about this story and the shit talking. I, we, I know uh, we're like, I we cannot stress how good the shit talking is in this book. It does sound like some supreme shit. Talking. Someone will go and start being like, oh, yes, I'm a sneaky little worm tongue type. Listen to my lies. Everyone, this person's a scoundrel. And they'll be like, you fucking hypocritical bitch. Anyone who's anyone could tell that anyone that's as strong as my boss could get anyone. He has no reason to rape this ugly bitch. Get him. Jesus. Why would he rape that ugly bitch? He could just show his strength and all the actual beauties would flock to him. Look Fuck at the you. Look at the woman around him. Which they he do, wouldn't yeah. even look at you once. He's just like, literally it's roasting. It's roasting. It's roast. If he could kill via roasting, he'd yeah. be un- undefeatable in the heavens. It sounds like he may be able to with the slaps. Ugh. Um. So what do we move on to? Uh, we didn't get to. Are we doing? Yeah, let's do let's do a couple of them. We got. Are we uh, doing advertisements? Uh, let's do a little business first. Yeah. First off, something I'm pretty excited about. Uh, Richard and I did a were interviewed on another podcast called the Department of Nerdly Affairs. Yeah, they, we we talked about 
they will ask us questions about the novel translations community and our show and books and tropes. It's just a good time. It's what it's like two hours of really fun time. I recommend yeah. checking them out. It was a, it was a really good time. I, I had a lot of a lot of fun with them on the show. Fantastic. That'll be fun to listen to. I got to hear it kind of from one side and from down a hallway. I'm excited to listen to the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, no, it's a. Uh, they've got a really good format. They're they're excellent hosts. So, cool. All right. Um, who was the person who uh, requested this? This was Vendoring Lionheart. Nice. I, I just double checked their name to make sure. Requested it on, on our Discord. Definitely check it out. It'll be in the description. We're yeah. in there talking about. Novels all the time. We've also got a Twitter that we are fairly active around. We've also got a website that will be uh, back going soon. And we are working on putting together a Patreon. Uh, with y'all's help, we might make that live here in uh, the next episode. So uh, let us know, and that link may start showing up here soon. Well, all right. I guess that brings us over to we didn't even get to. We didn't even get to his girlfriends, who we have like at least four of them, as far as I'm aware. Tong Wanner, Lu Funk. <laughs> He's got a fian- uh, Yeah, no, there's crazy. There's Wind Girl. There's Ice Girl. There's Beast Girl. There's wood Girl. Other Beast Girl. There's, there's wood, wood Girl. girl. Uh, oh, Wood Girl. And then wood there, Girl. There's Barbarian Archer who, who has to stay back. We and- didn't even get to talk about Monion. Uh, Monion. Uh, Archer Buddy. Yo, who would fuck with Mo Gate? <laughs> uh we didn't get to talk about all of the wacky monsters that they like the the wind beast or the dark phoenix or the dark phoenix eggs oh my god yeah, yeah, we didn't get to talk about the flame salamander yeah. and the earth flame mm. <sighs> and the fact that he always gets like things just slightly ahead of when he needs them we didn't get to talk about how awesome his dad is we didn't even get to talk Go. about the Julie Seeker realm. Julie! I mean, we did talk a little bit about it. We didn't specifically talk about it. Uh, we didn't talk about that selection exam that was really cool with all the the corrupt uh, righteous, the corrupt puppets. <laughs> You're right. Nor did we talk about the heavy, heavy righteous sect is worse than the corrupt oh, sect. Oh, boy, are they. Yeah, this whole thing is like, yeah, righteous sect sucks. Corrupt sect is like, Honor Among Thieves. Righteous Sect doesn't even have that. Mm. I think it was a fake. Maybe the corrupt sect called themselves righteous so they look better. It would be the corrupt thing to do. <laughs> uh, yeah, but domineering, man. Yeah, man. This is truly a man who lives to be a hegemon. Oh, we didn't talk about how alchemists, how, how alchemist cultivators fight. They literally turn themselves on fire and wield flame swords and spears. You can't fight them because you just incinerate if you get close enough. <laughs> Jesus Christ, that sounds like high risk fighting. <laughs> yeah, no, they're fine. Yeah. Well, alchemists, it's, yeah. r- it's very risky to fight an alchemist, yeah. yeah. What about alchemist v. alchemist? You would imagine an alchemist has like... Yeah, whoever has the higher rank flame usually is in a good spot. When you see them fighting, like you don't even... <laughs> See, like, information is just a giant ball of flames, like the sun fighting each other. Incredible. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. Well, that's going to wrap it up for this one. Like, really, I know we've said it, but I got to say it again. Go check this one out. It is excellent. Do it's it. just it, it's it's starting off. So I know some people uh, complain about being in the F5 sex, but honestly, it is kind of a joy to watch a story unfold. And to be a part of the community as it's going along. Yeah, hopping on early, being able to read those comment sections as they're relevant. That's probably exciting. Please become an outer member, the outer sec member of the F5 sect for this book. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is how dedicated I was to becoming an outer member of the F5 sect. I read this novel and caught up to the end and sacrificed my position on, on web novel. And now I'm in web novel hell for this. And it was worth it. Yeah, no, it's... Uh... It's a pretty incredible book. I think pretty much all of us finished within a week or two of starting. We it's it's a hard one to put down. All right. Well, that's a pretty ringing endorsement. I guess we'll see you guys next week. As always. Uh, yeah, next week. Let's not say that. Guys, people have been asking on uh, the Discord, so I'm just going to go ahead and throw out another general announcement. Our release schedule, what we aim for is every two weeks to a month for new episodes. Um, if we can do two weeks, we want to try and hit that. But realistically, often it ends up being more like a month. More recently, the last uh, gap was because we went on back-to-back vacations, so it really worked out great for not being able to record. 
It was brutal. very smart of us. Super, super smart of us. Very clever. Thanks, guys. Yeah. But we'll have this one out, and uh, we're doing more recording, so we hope to have more episodes out soon. Thank you guys so much for all your support. It really does mean the world to us. It's the reason why we keep doing this. Go leave us a review on iTunes. Go uh, listen to us on Spotify. We make money that way. Yeah, speaking of which, <laughs> uh, let me pull up one review. I actually found a place that uh, puts all the reviews together that we don't have to pay for. So that's pretty exciting. This one is from Romania that says, recently found this podcast and started to go through all the episodes. The guys are funny and you can see they are passionate about the books. I, for one, find it very enjoyable and hope they will keep doing the series. Uh, that's from OEE underscore UK uh, in Romania. Thanks so much, man. It means the Dude, world. It's wild how like how wide our podcast goes. Well, these are popular books from another country, so I, I understand the worldwide appeal. Yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, don't forget you can, uh, if you leave a review, I guess anywhere, I'll be able to find it on this new site. We couldn't do that for a minute because we had to pay for it. It was expensive, so we stopped doing that. <laughs> All right, well, we'll see you guys next week. No, right, next time. Next time. Bye. Ciao. Bye. Tiger Roller Coaster Productions. Tigers are scary. You try to get off.